Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the side effects of metformin and what you could do instead. If you're new to my channel, I'm Jessica Green. I'm an integrative health practitioner and health coach. Metformin is a prescription drug that affects how your body handles insulin. Insulin is the key hormone that helps to shuttle glucose into your cells. It could be your muscle cells, your liver cells, your brain cells, fat cells, and metformin also helps to reduce the amount of glucose that your liver will push out, say in the middle of the night or when you have low blood sugar. And metformin isn't just for prescribed to people with type 2 diabetes. It is also prescribed sometimes for people who have PCOS and or want to lose weight. Now, insulin is a main fat storage hormone. So if your body is overproducing insulin and it can result in additional fat accumulation, especially visceral fat accumulation. Metformin has absolutely doubled. The prescriptions have absolutely doubled between 2004 and 2020. It's upwards to around 92 million prescriptions in the United States alone. Part of this is really good marketing strategies. It's been touted as an anti-aging drug. In fact, there are books published on it, there are studies that are published on it, but this really fails to get to the underlying root cause cause of why someone would be insulin resistant in the first place. And yes, insulin resistance leads to all sorts of metabolic issues, including aging faster. So let's jump into some of the side effects of metformin. And I'm going to start with the most common side effect, bloating and digestive distress is one of the most common side effects and complaints of using metformin. Now, metformin could cause diarrhea. In particular, this is a concern because with a lot of diarrhea, you can have nutrient absorption issues from your foods and even from your supplements. The most common nutrients depleted as a result of this malabsorption are B9, B12, and CoQ10. Side effect number two, that would be nausea and vomiting. About 25% of users of metformin have complained about this particular symptom. Now, for many people, this will go away after a couple of weeks of starting the prescription or when you take it with meals. This could also help reduce some of those effects of nausea and vomiting. Side effect number three, fatigue. This is caused by nutrient depletion, especially CoQ10 and B12. This can lead to lower blood cell count, red blood cell count, which can lead to a feeling of weakness. And number four, tingling in hands and feet. This is often caused by low B12. Symptom number five, metformin can actually reduce testosterone. In fact, this is one of the reasons why it's prescribed sometimes to PCOS patients. Now, reduced testosterone can impact libido in both men and women and can cause erectile dysfunction in men. Reduced testosterone can also impact how your body puts on muscle. So big, big deal there. We want to keep our muscle in order to improve insulin sensitivity. Number six, hair loss. For some, this can be an issue. For others, maybe not so much, but this is related to nutrient depletion, including anemia. Side effect number seven, muscle atrophy. Now, this is a big one. The mechanisms, the precise mechanisms of this aren't exactly figured out yet by researchers, but we know that prolonged use of metformin can lead to muscle atrophy. Now, if you've watched my previous videos, you know how important muscle is when it comes to increasing insulin sensitivity. This is really, really big. So you need muscle mass to improve insulin sensitivity, reduce insulin resistance, and metformin reduces muscle mass. Not a good thing. Symptom number eight, anemia. Now, the mechanisms aren't entirely clear yet based on research, so one of the things that'll be really important if you've been using metformin to definitely get your B12 and iron levels checked. 
Number nine, lactic acidosis. Now this is rare, but it's pretty significant. It could affect your kidney function and it could lead to a number of health conditions, including death, which I wouldn't really consider a health condition. It's more of like, oh, it's a death condition. But that is much more extreme. It's much more rare, but just be aware that when you're on metformin for a long period of time, that lactic acidosis is something to absolutely watch for. Now, the number one alternative that I have for you for metformin is diet and lifestyle. By reducing your carb intake, you can reduce insulin spikes and that can help your body become more insulin sensitive. The other strategy that is really important is to increase muscle mass. You would do this by eating an adequate amount of protein for your body. So for a typical woman over 40, I would recommend around 100 grams per day. Might sound like a little bit much, but I can guarantee if you're low in protein right now, your energy level is probably Probably also low. You'll notice a significant increase in energy level, but also this will help you to maintain and then also build muscle mass. So building muscle mass can be done through weight training exercises or even just starting with body weight training exercises. You can also use aerobic activity, though if you're particularly stressed, I would recommend focusing on long walks instead of high intensity aerobic activity, but aerobic activity is really, really nice if you're not a very stressed person. If you're currently taking metformin and have not been supplementing with a good quality B complex, and I say good quality because it's really important that your B12 supplement that you take is a methylated version of that supplement, not cyanocobalamin, but methylcobalamin, all right? That's the first thing that I would do a really nice B complex. The next thing I would consider taking is a CoQ10 and then also getting your iron levels checked. If your iron levels are low, supplementing with a nice iron like Ferrisor by Thorne, I really, really love them. But if you're still having digestive upset, this could be something that you might consider taking to a naturopathic doctor, getting tested for iron levels, and if you need to be bypass your digestive system for increasing iron levels, levels, I would consider asking them for an IV treatment as an alternative to supplementation with something like Ferrisor. I'll be sure to link up some of my favorite B complexes and also that Thorn Ferrisor down below. You could order them through my dispensary where I offer 20% off for all of my clients. There are a handful of supplements that I also really like for improving insulin sensitivity. One of them is berberine. Now I'll go more in depth in this in another episode, but berberine is very similar to metformin in the way that it works, but it doesn't have the same sort of side effects that metformin does. Inositol is another really great alternative. It's more commonly used for people with PCOS. However, it could also be used to improve insulin sensitivity in men and women. And finally, there is one other supplement that I don't offer through my dispensary. This is Curalin and it's by Cura Life. This I've found a lot of success with for myself and for clients in helping to reduce those glucose spikes after having a meal. I'll be sure to link all the supplements down below in the description. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you taking the time. Please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next week.